In this lesson, we're going to look at refraction of waves. You'll be able to state what refraction of a wave is and what causes it. You'll be able to complete ray diagrams to show refraction of waves, including the wave front. You'll be able to state and explain what happens to the wavelength when waves refract. You'll be able to explain why wave fronts bend. And for triple only, you'll be able to describe an experiment to investigate refraction of light. So this is just a re quick recap um, of how light reflects. This tiny bit is only for triples, but it helps everyone else understand about wave fronts. So at key stage three, uh, you looked at how uh, light reflects off a mirror. And you remember, we draw this silly line, which is called the normal uh, to the mirror, because the angle of incidence is not measured to the mirror, it's measured to the normal. Now, of course, we know that light reflects at the same angle. So angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Now, what we also have to be able to do is to show what happens to the wave fronts. Now, the wave fronts, you can imagine them like the crests of the waves, um, and that is a wavelength. And the wave fronts are at right angled direction in which the wave is traveling. So, of course, when they come to here, they will bend and reflect like that. So, that is how you draw that diagram. Now, I want you to quickly watch this quick video uh, which shows what happens to light when it goes into glass. So, this is our air to glass boundary in the video. And this is a normal at right angles to the boundary. And you can see that light bent, refracted towards the normal because it slows down going to glass. And then going from glass back into air, it bends away from the normal as it speeds up again. So again, you can see that when light goes into glass, it slows down and bends towards the normal. That's called the refracted ray. And when it comes out again, by drawing a normal here, you can see the angle of incidence going back out. And of course it speeds up, so it bends away from the normal, so the angle of refraction is bigger. So what happens to the wavelength and frequency when waves travel from one medium into another and change speed? We have to use the wave equation to work this out. And the key thing is that frequency stays the same. You don't gain or lose waves per second, which means that if the speed decreases, the wavelength must also decrease, or if the speed goes up, the wavelength goes up. Now we can see this with water waves. Just watch this little video. To work out what's happening, think of light as a series of waves. This ripple tank uses a dipper to send parallel water waves across its surface. Putting a plastic sheet into the water makes this part of the tank shallower than the rest. Waves travel more slowly in shallow water. This change in speed changes the wavelength. The wavelength on the top is shorter than the one on the bottom. So we can see from this little video that in deep water they have a larger wavelength and in shallower water they have a small wavelength and these are the wave fronts, or the crests of the waves, being drawn. That is one wavelength, and you can see that's a larger wavelength, and this is a smaller wavelength. So in your exam, how would you complete this diagram to show what happens to the wavelength as it goes into shallow water and then back into deep water because a glass block was put in the ripple tank? The first thing we need to do is to draw the direction in which the wave is travelling which is at right angles to the wave front. Notice it will go in at the normal and out at the normal, so it doesn't change direction. We add arrows to the diagram to show the direction in which the wave travels. Notice it's going from deep to shallow, which means we must make the wavelength smaller as it's slowing down. So we draw the wave fronts at right angles to the direction, making sure that the wavelength is smaller. Finally, we need to draw the water waves as they exit back into deep water. Because the water is the same depth on the other side, 
now travel at the same speed, so we need to keep the wavelength the same as it was at the start, drawing again the wave fronts at right angles to the direction. Now those waves were travelling along the normal. What happens if they come at an angle to the boundary? Have a look and see. When the sheet is at an angle, the waves also change direction. The wave fronts bend as they reach the plastic sheet. So that's quite difficult seeing what's happening from the video of the ripple tank, although they did enhance the wave fronts for you. So let's have a look in a bit more detail. We've got the boundary which I've drawn between deep and shallow water. And I worked out the direction in which the waves are travelling because they go at right angles to the wave fronts. Where they hit the boundary, I've drawn the normal, which of course is at right angles to the boundary between deep and shallow. And that gives me my angle of incidence. Now, I worked out which direction these were travelling in by drawing another ray at right angles to the wave front. And then finally, you can see that's my angle of refraction. And of course, it slows down. And so the rays bend or the direction bends towards the normal. And we can see that really clearly, proving refraction. Now, if you have to draw this in your exam, this is the technique you need to use. The first thing is, we've got our waves traveling this way, we've got deep and shallow water. That's slower and that is faster. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my normal and look at my angle of incidence. I'm then going to draw my refracted ray bending towards the normal and you can see very clearly that I've made that angle much smaller than that. So this wave front here, part of it is still travelling the deep water fast, but the rest of it has already entered the shallow water and is travelling slow. So we have to draw this part in a new direction and it needs to be at right angles to the direction in which the wave is travelling, so I've drawn it like that. The next one has got to be parallel to this and starts from there and so on. By drawing those, we've now got our wavelength, which is much shorter than that wavelength, and we can carry on drawing a few more wave fronts, which are parallel and the same distance apart. So I'm now going to show you how I'll draw this in an exam uh, on paper. The first thing we do is again draw the direction in which the waves are travelling, which is at right angles to the wave front. The next thing we need to do is to draw the normal, which is at right angles to the boundary between the deep water and the shallow water. Labelling the angle of instance helps to see what size that angle is. Remember we're going from deep water to shallow water, so the wave is going to slow down and therefore the direction is going to bend towards the normal. Make sure it bends quite a bit towards the normal so examiners can see the difference. Finally, we need to draw the wave fronts in the shallow water. Start with the ruler next to the first wave front and then bend it so that it's at right angles to the new direction. The rest of the waves must be parallel to the first one. So you can see that the wave fronts are close together and that gives you the size of the wavelength. You can also then carry that on slightly further going the other way. And secondly, what happens if they asked you to go from shallow to deep rather than deep to shallow? Again, we first draw the direction in which the waves are travelling and put an arrow on it. This time the waves travelling from shallow to deep water, so it's going to speed up and bend away from the normal. To see the angle of incidence clearly, we need to draw the normal again to the boundary. Because the wave speeds up, we're going to make sure the direction bends away from the normal, giving a larger angle that the examiner can see. Finally, we line up the ruler with the first wave front and then bend it so that it is at right angles to the new direction. We then carry on with the other wave fronts being parallel 
to the first one. Now we can also use models to explain why those wave fronts change direction when they go from one medium into another or they speed up and slow down. And this is a classic example. This truck animation is a great way of explaining why the wave fronts bend. The truck first travels on concrete and then hits sand. When the first wheel hits the sand it slows down. The other wheels are still travelling faster and therefore travel further. So the whole of the lorry bends into a new direction. So you can see that as the wheels hit here, this wheel starts to go slower, so it doesn't travel as far. This wheel is still in the grass and is traveling faster, so the whole thing bends around. So let's now have a look at some exam questions on refraction to see how you would apply what you've learned. Now, some of these are drawing ones, which you're not going to be able to do uh, from the video. So my suggestion is you just think about how you would draw it. So pause the video and I'll go through it in a minute. So what you've done is you've thought that light travels into glass, it slows down, so it bends towards the normal. You've then bent it away from the normal, going out as it speeds up, and that should be the same angle. Two marks. So you've been asked to compare the angle of refraction between plastic and water when you increase the angle of incidence. You'll notice that water has a higher angle of refraction for every single angle of incidence compared with plastic. So that is your answer. Now again, have a go at these. Just think about how you would draw them. So the first one, we can see it's going to go into glass and so it's going to bend towards the normal. I'm then going to draw normal at the new boundary at right angles so I can get an idea of where the angle of instance is. It's going to speed up, bend away from the normal, so I'm going to bend it away from the normal like that. I'm then going to put my angle of instance and refraction, my angle of instance again coming out, my angle of refraction coming out. The second one, I've drawn the normal to the boundary and I know it's going to bend towards the normal. But notice what happens now. Because it's coming out and this is a circle and that's the centre, it actually comes in out at right angles to the boundary, so carries on straight. That's your angle of instance, that's your angle of refraction. Have a read through this and decide what you're going to say. So this first seems quite a challenging question and students did struggle with this last year, but actually it's not that tricky if you think of the analogy, the model with the um, lorry. You're asked to explain why refraction happens the boundary. And so we're looking at the idea of changing speed. So the first thing you need to say is the speed of waves uh, is slowed down or is slower in the water. That will give you one mark. The second thing you need to say is that this means the edge of the wave front entering the shallow water slows down first. Which means that that part of the wave doesn't travel as far as the part that is still in the deep water, so it bends. The next part of the question was this. Explain why the water fronts in figure 17 do not refract at the boundary. You can't say they're going in at the normal. Think of something else. I'll give you some time to do that. Pause the video. So for this one, you can see that all the wave front is going to slow down at the same time because it all enters the shallow water at the same time, so it will not change direction. So let's reflect on what we've done. You should be able to state what refraction is. That's the bending of light or a wave because it changes speed. You should be able to complete ray diagrams to show refractive waves, including the wavefronts. 
you should be able to state and explain what happens to the wavelength when waves refract. So if the speed increases, so does the wavelength. If the speed decreases, so does the wavelength, because frequency stays the same. You should be able to explain why wave fronts bend. The idea uh, using the lorry that the wave front that slows down first doesn't travel as far uh, compared with uh, the wave front that's still in uh, the deep water and so it bends. And finally, the last bit is on an experiment to investigate refraction of light, which is for triple only, which follows next. Thank you. This is one of the required practicals for physics GCSE, investigating how light refracts when it goes into and comes out of glass. First place a glass block onto a piece of paper and draw around the edge. Next draw the normal at right angles to the boundary between air and glass. Now draw your instant ray and measure the angle with the protractor to the normal and write it down. Place the glass block back on your paper making sure it lines up exactly with the rectangle that you've drawn. Then using a ray box shine a ray of light directly along the line that you have drawn. Next draw two crosses on the ray that exits the block making sure they are far apart for accuracy. Then remove the glass block and the ray box. Next join the crosses up to show where the light exited the glass block. Now join the two rays of light up to show the path of the light through the glass. You can now clearly see that as light goes into the glass block it bends towards the normal as it slows down and when it leaves the glass block it bends away from the normal as it speeds up. Finally use your protractor to measure the angle of refraction and record this down. You could now repeat the experiment for different angles or you could use a plastic block rather than glass to see what difference it makes.